Active imagination is a process in Jungian psychology used to bridge the gap between the conscious and unconscious minds, opening oneself to the unconscious and giving free rein to fantasy, while at the same time maintaining an active, attentive, conscious point of view. The process leads to a synthesis that contains both perspectives in a new and surprising way. Jungian psychology heavily emphasizes dream interpretation and the contents of the unconscious mind. During active imagination, Jungian analysts encourage clients to translate the contents of dreams without adding any analysis from the conscious mind. This article is focused on providing a theoretical introduction and short history of the subject for learning how to practice active imagination. Psychologists believe that the mind is divided into two parts, the conscious and the unconscious. The conscious part of our minds is that small bubble of attention that feels awake and aware of what we are doing right this moment, which in your case is reading these words. This focus point of awareness is called the ego. The unconscious part of our minds is a much larger field of awareness that deals with all the other background processes and sensations, like keeping our hearts beating and storing our memories. These things are unconscious because they would be a distraction to our egos from concentrating on the present moment. Active imagination works by encouraging the conscious and unconscious mind to communicate through making our conscious attention explore down into the unconscious mind. No tree, it is said, can grow to heaven unless its roots reach down to hell. Carl Jung it does this by focusing our conscious minds on the expressions of our unconscious minds, our dreams. How to do active imagination The method Jung taught is simple. All we do is choose one of our most recent dreams to analyze, grab a pen and paper, find a nice place to sit down and meditate, and follow these steps. Step 1. Find focus. When we start meditating, our minds are usually very active and jumpy. So our first port of call is to calm the mind and get a hold of our stream of attention. This is where all those hours of mind training come into use as you can deploy that big strong focus muscle. As the mind relaxes, we become aware of our little pocket of attention that is there, witnessing all our rushing thoughts. This is our conscious mind, and it is the tool which we will use for our next step. Step 2. Focus on the dream. When the mind has calmed and we feel we are present, we move our attention onto an image from the recent dream we have chosen. The trick here is to keep our attention held to the dream for a long time. We may slip into thinking about grocery shopping or Mike from work. But when that happens, we calmly just bring our attention back to the dream image. Step 3. Allow the unconscious to speak. When we focus on the dream image, we are peering into the unconscious mind to get the message that the unconscious is trying to communicate to us through our dream we need to start allowing the unconscious to speak through the image to do this we need to loosen our focus just enough so that the unconscious can start to animate the dream image but we need to be careful not to loosen our focus too much or we may get absorbed and find ourselves thinking about mike again this is the crucial step as we allow our unconscious mind to speak, we may enter back into the narrative of the dream, or we may end up speaking to one of the dream characters. Sometimes it may even be dark or weird, especially if we're using this to understand nightmares. But this is all right. It's just something we might have avoided facing in the past. This is a good place to face our fears and accept our aspirations. There is no coming to consciousness without pain. People will do anything, no matter how absurd, in order to avoid facing their own soul. One does not become enlightened by imagining figures of light, but by making the darkness conscious. Carl Jung Whatever the form this manifestion takes, engage with it, and try to remember it as vividly as possible, because in our next step, we are going to bring it to life. Step 4 Create an artifact. Now we must channel your inner Picasso or James Joyce by taking that piece of paper in front of us and writing, drawing or painting whatever we just experienced in the silence of our mind. 
The goal here is not to get caught up on trying to make a masterpiece, but merely to make that unconscious image into an artifact which we can try decipher in our next step. If it comes out like a shit in a mug, then so be it. This step shows the hidden bonus active imagination has in store for anyone suffering from writer's block. It is a way to tap into an insane amount of creative potential. It also teaches the crucial lesson of creating first, then criticizing. Step 5. Become an analyst. Now we take a break. We may go make a tea. We may call Mike to see what he's up to. We take our minds out of the imagination and back into normal consciousness. When we're ready and grounded, we turn to our inner art critic, a.k.a. our intellects, and we see can we find the message contained within the piece of artwork we just made. Take action. Try it out for yourself. Try the technique out a few times, and when you get comfortable, experiment with various alterations such as focusing on a dream feeling instead of a dream image, create using pottery, clay, or a random medium instead of paper. Interact verbally with the characters and give them accents. That being said, always keep the principle the same. Allow the unconscious to manifest into consciousness and then try integrate its lessons. As Jung himself said, until you make the unconscious conscious, it will direct your life and you will call it fate. Thanks for watching.